Hare Krishna. So many associates of Sri Ramachandra are throwing in um, stones, uh, while the other camp is so well equipped with uh, very aristocratic um, weapons, and they, the side of Sri Ram with bear and monkey, they actually win. So I was talking about how our action uh, may be insignificant, but if the intention is strong and significant, then we win. Some examples are, um, let's say starting with the Pandavas. The Pandavas were only five on one side and the Kauravas were hundred. But because their intention was to please Krishna and Krishna was on their side, because their desire was to please Krishna, of course, and the Kauravas were hundred, they in fact, Duryodhan in fact even chose Krishna's army, the Narayani Sena. So he had a lot of uh, army and weapons and people, but because the intention was wrong, he came on the losing side. And Yatra Yogeshwara Krishna comes in this context, that if the devotee uh, is simple-hearted and uh, he's trying his best and trying to serve Krishna, and Krishna's on that side, then victory is definitely guaranteed on that camp. Another example would be, the squirrel was just trying to push sand in making of the bridge, while on the other side you have personalities like uh, Indrajit, who had uh, even snake weapons, Nagpash, Nagpash. Pash means uh, to bind and Nag means snake. So Indrajit on the other hand was so skilled, they all had flying chariots, but what was the quali qualification of this little insignificant squirrel which was just throwing in and pushing in some dust. Um, Ability-wise, species-wise, uh, mystical potency-wise, they had uh, so many things, but which the squirrel did not. But the squirrel was on the right side because his intention was to please the Supreme Lord, please Krishna. Similarly, we see Shabari, she offered just a few berries or Vidura's wife, Vidurani, didn't even offer fruit. She actually offered the peel of the fruits. She offered a banana peel. And on the other hand, we had Duryodhan who invited the Supreme Lord for a big chapan bhog. But Duryodhan ko bhog na khayo, rook saakh vidure ghar khayo, aise prem pujari radhe shyam shyam shyam. Very famous Brajbhasha song that... Uh, Duryodhan ko bhoga na khayo. Krishna did not accept the chapan bhoga of Duryodhan, but he was ready as Ram to chew on the berries offered by Shabri, a comparatively older lady, and giving in motherly love. And the wife of Vidurani, who was not even giving fruits, was actually giving the peel of those fruits. Or the fruit vendor in Brandavan, who was only giving some fruits. She didn't give a palace to Krishna. But Krishna picked the fruits of the fruit vendor, picked the berries of Shabri, picked the peel of the banana of Vidurani compared to the chapan bog of Duryodhan. Because this may have been very insignificant as far as quality is concerned, as far as quantity is concerned, as far as opulence is concerned. But it was surcharged with devotion, the spirit to serve Krishna and please Krishna. And this is why even after going to Dwaraka, Krishna remembered the butter of Vrindavan. Now in Dwarka, he was eating on golden plates and he was drinking from golden jar, maybe even honey and so many aristocratic offerings. But in Vrindavan, he remembered the simple but tasty butter which was offered with so much love by the motherly gopis. So sometimes in life, all that we may have is a flower to offer Krishna. That's it. On the other hand, there may be somebody who's even offering a, you know, one crore rupees or a, a crown for uh, Ram Lalla in Ayodhya or maybe uh, a gold chain for Srinivas, Venkateshwara and Tirupati. But on the other hand, a devotee may just have a little flower to offer. And Prabhupada writes in teachings of uh, Queen Kunti, I believe in the, I'll, I'll pull out the reference. Um, he explains of teachings of Lord Kapila, I, I feel. I think teachings of Lord Kapila, chapter 7. Prabhupada writes in the end of one purport that um, 
when you offer even a flower with devotion, Krishna smiles because he has accepted that. The deity smiles because he has accepted the flower. And receiving a smile from the Supreme Lord is the perfection of the human form of life, Prabhupada writes. So it could be just offering one flower. Gajendra just offered one flower, but Krishna came for him. Hmm? Krishna came for him. Now, uh, the situation of these monkeys fighting Ravana's territory is like Gajendra fighting the crocodile in the pond. Because these bear and these monkeys, they are devotees like Gajendra, and they are now put in the home ground advantage uh, of the demons, because they are fighting in Lanka. So that's like Gajendra fighting the crocodile, not in land, but in water, where the crocodile has home ground advantage. And just like Gajendra was bleeding for a long time, and the crocodile was biting into the flesh of Gajendra, similarly these Vanaras of Ramachandra were being hurt by the demons on the other side. But just like Gajendra was offering a flower with so much devotion, these men of Ram were uh, fighting. Every arrow, every trident, uh, every spear that they were offering in the service of Sri Ram was like... Um, so Arjuna offering arrows, these monkeys offering tridents and spears, and Gajendra offering a flower. It's all on the transcendental plane. It's all same. Um, because they're all doing it to serve Krishna. And wherever the desire to serve Krishna is there, that's where there is victory. So Krishna came for Gajendra, because Gajendra just offered one flower. We may offer so many aristocratic things, but Krishna may not come for us, because we are doing it with the desire to show others, look how much I am offering, or with the desire to be acknowledged for what we are offering. But Gajendra was just offering one flower, selflessly crying out for protection. And these monkeys are just throwing in stones in the building of the bridge, or they're just throwing in spears and tridents in the battle with Ravan, and they're doing it to please Ram, selflessly. It's not their wife who was kidnapped, it's Ram's wife who was kidnapped, but they love Sita and Ram, so therefore every offering was out of selfless love. So similarly, in our practical life, we are all endowed and bestowed with different levels of intelligence and bodily beauty and fame and strength and money and power and influence and talents and skill sets and attributes. But if the intention is not in the right place, all of this is a big zero. All of these are zeros and our desire to please Krishna is the one. If that is there, and even if talents are not there, one is better than zero. You can have series of zeros, but if that one is not there, then it's just a series of zeros. And if just that one is there and nothing else is there, it is still a one. But if that intention is there with all of this, then it just gets from one to ten to hundred to thousand, it just gets magnified. Another classic example we can find. <coughs> is the example of Advaita Acharya. Advaita Acharya just offered one tulsi leaf. He was just offering a tulsi leaf. He was not making a big temple or he was not doing anything. He was just offering a simple tulsi leaf to a Shaligram Srila. And Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu came. He had went it, being attracted by Advaita Acharya's devotion. So these little things make uh, so much difference if the intention is right. Similarly, we find the example of the South Indian Brahmana who was reading the Bhagavad Gita, but he was weeping. And Chaitanya Mahaprabhu came to him and he may not have known how to read Sanskrit or how to sing poetically these verses or explain them scholarly with commentaries, nothing. He was just, his heart was just touched with a simple um, sentiment that how is the Supreme Lord, the Lord of all Lords, how is it that he gets uh, uh, attracted by the devotion of his devotee and he becomes the driver of the chariot of Arjun? And the South Indian Brahmana could not uh, digest this sentiment of Krishna's unbelievable love for his devotee. Even in this world, you ask a rich man to become a chauffeur for someone's car 
and they wouldn't agree it's uh, below their dignity they would find just the idea to be completely preposterous but the supreme lord the lord of all lords the co- the the cause of all causes he becomes parthasarathi this the south indian brahmana could not he could accept but he could not completely digest out of so much love so because his heart was in the right place um chaitanya mahaprabhu came and embraced him and accepted his devotion on the other hand keshav kashmiri or prakashananda saraswati they all may have had so much more scholarship but because the heart was not in the right place it was in a mood of finding faults with the lord debating with the lord uh, therefore although the skills it it outweighed the south indian brahmana the intelligence outweighed the south indian brahmana's intelligence but because that intention that simple desire to serve for the pleasure of the lord was in there um nimai pandit defeated keshav kashmiri and converted 60000 sanyasi disciples of prakashananda saraswati so in this way even in our life one may not be a classically trained vocalist one may not be an expert harmonium or a mridanga player but if the desire is to simply sing for krishna then that pleases krishna more than someone who's very skilled but is doing it with the intention to get more following or more attention etc this is the heart of bhakti ahaituki apratihata yayatma su prasidati to selflessly uh, serve krishna in an uninterrupted unmotivated fashion that i don't want anything my lord and my service won't stop however insignificant it may be i will continue to serve you for your pleasure and this is why shrila prabhupada um, whose kirtans were very simple very profound but very simple he didn't change his melody so many times he was just keeping a simple kartal a simple gong a simple mridanga and a simple mahamantra melody but it created a whole hari krishna explosion a revolution in the whole world because of his sincerity his compassion for the fallen condition souls and his desire just to broadcast krishna's glory to please krishna and therefore we can see even when the hippies began and they may have faltered with the pronunciation of sanskrit or they may have faltered with the vidhi of vedic culture uh when there were some insults and there was some um fault finding with their pronunciation prabhupada shot back and said their pronunciation may not be perfect but their renunciation is perfect and they were doing it to please krishna and that's all that matters so we all in this world we may be like bear and monkeys but it's important to throw in the spear to to throw in the trident and the the boulders the stones of our small small steps and services but for the pleasure of shri ram that is what is important so even when we dress the deity we may not be very artistic of course we can learn how to be more artistic but the innate talent may not be there in everyone everyone may not be blessed with everything but whatever we are blessed with yat karoshi yad ashnasi yad juhoshi dadasi yat whatever we do the most important thing is tat kurushva mad arpanam krishna says do it for my pleasure not for anything else would we be doing it with the same intensity even when nobody is watching even when it's not recorded even when it's not broadcast even when nobody acknowledges that is the test that is the test so every activity we want to do it to please krishna 